Easy. Right, let's do a little puzzle, shall we? A little game of guess who. So a few days ago, Lee Kane and Dominic Cummins exit Downing Street. On the orders of Boris Johnson's spunk trumpet, Carrie Simmons. We all know Carrie Simmons likes her little pet green projects. And then all of a sudden, we see Boris Johnson announce that there is going to be a ban on the sale of petrol and diesel cars from 2030. I wonder who might be behind that little idea. Any takers? Now in the description box you will see a video I made about a year ago talking about electric vehicles. I've picked up a few new folks since then. Uh, so if you look at that video you will see my arguments on more of a technical and mechanical basis as to why electric cars are useless. Um, so I'll let that video do the talking on that one, but for today I want to talk about the political side of it. Because these people who have dreamt this one up clearly are London-centric and have no idea of how people live uh, in the north of England and particularly more rural areas in the north of England. Firstly, I will tell you right now that the infrastructure required to um, support the mass rollout of electric vehicles will never ever be built in these areas. They will first start with London, then they will move on to other major cities and move very slightly north. They probably won't get any further north than something like maybe Birmingham. Uh, and then everybody else will be left to rot, will be left to fend for themselves. Now, it's all right banning um, the sale of petrol and diesel cars. That's the easy bit. The difficult bit is making sure that an alternative is in place before they do that. Now, you might think, use more public transport. Well, let me tell you this for people who don't know rural northern England. There are villages in these areas who are lucky to get one bus per week. They live in places where their only chance of charging will be their homes. They will never be... Um, what you might call these communal or public charging bays. Now, let me give you an example of something here. I, I cover, on an average, 10,000 miles per year in my car. If I use my car to go to work and back only, I would do 3,000 per year. I do the other 7,000 on a weekend, taking my bike into places like rural North Yorkshire, and County Durham, North Wales, North Yorkshire Moors, Peak District, to do what I class as my exercise, which is uh, a full day out on the bike, tearing up the streets and the big hills as well. And uh, I can tell you this, that the places that I go to, um, in fact, I actually, just funny enough, I was contacted in the comments box by a guy who lives in Ingleton. And he'll know what I'm talking about when I talk about this. That... In places like the Yorkshire Dales, you've got Ingleton, you've got Hawes, Bainbridge, Leyburn, Reith, Muka, Sedberg, Grassington, Settle, places like that. And the people who live in those villages, they rely on petrol and diesel vehicles. They can't use public transport, they won't be, the, the, the facilities for charging will be non-existent. And certainly for people that go visit these places on weekends, that's tourism, that brings money into the towns, yeah? People go into those areas to walk the Three Peaks and things like that. They bring money into local towns. They will not go anymore. It will dry up. Because I can tell you right now, if I set off from home to one of those places, I would probably not be able to get home on a full charge in an electric vehicle. That means that I would have to find somewhere out there to charge my car up. If I'm lucky and I happen to find somewhere that doesn't have anybody else using it already, I might get away with a 30 minute charge. If there's another four people queuing for it, that means I'm going to be stuck there for two hours, probably freezing to death in the winter. And I could probably get home from somewhere like Ingleton in less than two hours. That makes it completely untenable for people to do something like that. So these places will die. Farmers as well. Farmers need electric four, uh, uh, sorry, uh, petrol and diesel four by fours to get around their fields. They need it to take their sheep to the um, 
the auction place that they've got a horse, for instance. So what are they going to have to do? They'll have to buy an electric car. They'll probably get two or three sheep, throw them in the boot, make one trip down there, unload those three sheep, go back for another three, throw them in the boot. Oh, shit, we suddenly run out of charge. Sorry, guys, I'll have to charge up for 30 minutes. You'll have to wait for my next delivery of three sheep. I mean, come on. They have no idea what they are unleashing here with this shit. So, this is what's going to happen. Now, Nigel Farage, I have a... A very good idea for you, Nigel. Bring your new reform party to the north of England and campaign on a manifesto of overturning this ridiculous idea as a priority. Boris Johnson, with this move alone, has lost the support of the north of England. The votes are here for you to mop up by the millions. Do not waste your time. Get here, campaign hard and spread out your candidates. The votes are waiting for you, Nigel. You are going to mop up millions, believe me. This is going to devastate people's daily lives more than Brexit ever ever could or, the, or being stuck in the European Union ever could. This is daily hardship that people are going to suffer if this goes ahead and they will never vote for a party who is intent on rolling this out. So, Nigel, the gold is waiting for you here to pick up, mate. Don't let it slide. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time. Easy.